Welcome to this video. In this video, we will learn how to backup and restore database in SQL Server. We will also learn and understand the difference between a full backup and a differential backup. So let's get started. Okay, I'm in my SQL Server Management Studio and I've connected to my instance. Uh, I have a database over here in which I would like to carry out a backup and restore it under my test environment, test DB. So what I would do is I will go and select the DDB that I would want to do a backup of, right click on it and select tasks, then select backup. When I click on to that, I will get this option. So the first option that it will ask me is it will ask me to select my backup type. Now I have two options to select from. The default one is the full and the other one is the differential. Now a full backup will do its full backup as it's supposed to do. Uh, on the other hand, if you select a differential backup, then what it means is that a differential backup is based on the most recent previous full data backup. And so what it will do is it will only capture the data that has changed since the last full previous data backup. Uh, that is the difference between a full and a differential backup. So what I will do now is I will change it to full backup as I would like to carry out a full backup. And under my destination, I will select, I'll keep it as disk. And by default, what it does is SQL Server stores the backup onto its backup folder. And so if you would like to change your backup path, what you could do is you can click on the add button and you can click on this arrow over here and you can go in and specify the folder that you would like to browse against. Now, if you are specifying a different folder in which you would like to take a backup of, so when you click on a, on a specific drive and so what happens is if you name a file as adventure works and click on okay click on okay and if you do a backup what it will do is let me just quickly do that and i'll show you what i mean so if i quickly take a backup of that so what i've done is i have moved that file from the d drive to a special folder as i had other documents on the d drive and so what i want to stress over here is when you enter the file name without specifying the file type, it will save it as a file type. So it's not saving it as .bak. So just wanted you to be mindful that if you are taking a backup and if you are specifying a different path, then you will need to enter the extension as well against that. So if I go back uh, to the C drive and if I select the destination that I want it to go, and if I select my file name is adventurewalks.bak BAK. click on ok and if i just remove this one and if i click on ok again to carry out the backup then you will notice that it has backed up with uh, an extension of .bak file so you can see the difference over here this will store as the file and this one will store as a BAK file. And yes, if you're trying to restore this database, you will not be able to do so. It will give you an error. Now let me restore database and let me show you by doing that. So if I right click over here and if I click on restore and if I select database, that's how I would go and restore my database. And so I will select it from a specific device in which I will specify the path. So I will add the backup path over here. And in this case, it will be on my D drive and on my SQL backup folder, which I've created. And so you would see this. Now, if I change this to all files, you'd also see this. So let's try to quickly restore and see if it gives any error or not. And so you would straight off the bat, you'll see this error already showing you over here. The media set is not complete. So it has also even removed it. It's not allowing it to accept it. So that's something that I wanted to show. You. Now, if I remove this and then if I add the actual backup uh, from my D drive, you would notice that it has successfully accepted it without any issues. So before I click on OK to run the backup, what I would do is I would click on verify backup media so that the system does its own verification and says that if the backup is successful or if there's any issues with my backup. Now in this instance as well, if I click on OK, I will get an error. So let me just do that and show you the error. So there you go. 
it tells me that the database it has failed and if i click on this icon on this link um, it tells me that the backup holds a backup of our other database existing on on the backup that i'm going to update on so what i would do is i would go to my options and i would tick override existing database with the replace so what it's going to do is in case if there's any default template uh, tables any dbos that has been created i would replace it with the full backup so i'm going to override any existing database um if the database is actually running through a system uh, you would also get the error so what you would want to do you would want to click on uh, close existing connections to the destination database in this case uh, it's going to be the adventure walks underscore test so if the database is in, currently in use by some someone then what it will do is it will close the connections on on any database before it does the restoration so this is optional but yes you would if if users are maybe suppose um not logged out then you would click on it to ensure that you are in a single user mode and then once once you have selected these two options you will click on okay and now as you can see it has started to do its restoration process and once it's done it will give us a dialog prompt stating that our backup has been successfully restored so i hope you have enjoyed watching this video if so please do give a thumbs up and consider subscribing i will see you in the next video Thanks for watching.